Forced to work from home by your employer? Laid off or feeling depressed at home? Do you want to make money working from anywhere? We'll show you how to do it from your couch. It's time for another episode of the Work From Home Show. Coming to you from their homes in Austin, Texas and Tampa, Florida. Here are your hosts, Adam and Naresh. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Work From Home Show. I'm Naresh Fissa with Adam Schrader. And today we have Rosie Mercado on the show. She is an internationally renowned plus size model, celebrity makeup artist. And by the way, I, we can see video of you right now, Rosie. And I, I don't think you're a plus size model anymore. But anyway, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that. She's a celebrity makeup artist, a fashion designer, and television personality. She was a star of the reality TV show Curvy Girls on Nouveau TV and also featured in National Geographic's taboo she is currently a special correspondent and life coach on the doctors and dr phil and she's the co-host of face the truth on fox she is the best-selling author of the podcast and the new book the girl with the self-esteem issues a memoir rosie mercado welcome to the work from home show thank you so much excited to be um to be on here to be able to chat with you guys yeah, well, first, before we get into your story, you've got an interesting sign in your, we can see a video of you, you've got an interesting sign behind you. Can you t- can you share for our listeners what that says and why you have that sign? <laughs> yeah, it's part of, it's actually in my book. Um, you know, I just got criticized so much when it came to my weight, my hips growing up, you know, starting at such a young age and dealing with self-esteem issues because of the constant rejection and criticism, number one, for being Latina, number two, for having hips and not um i never i never really was someone that fit in high school or middle school i always got bullied and people were mean and they called me the worst names ever um they always you know call me fat ass and i could i could i mean i could go on names it's not even worth it but my sign says my ass is a gift and you know what i went through so many ups and downs and so much rejection and it is my ass is a gift my Mm -hmm. body is a gift and Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's taken me, you know, through some dark moments and it's it's been with me while I've given birth to my kids and it's with me now and it's I'm breathing and I'm still alive and I'm thankful for that. And when you walk in gratitude with that, the haters can hate, but you know what? <laughs> Their story is not my reality. Yeah, I love that uh, on the top of your website, it has a video or it has a thing of you on GMA and it looks like they made you take that sign down. For, oh, yes. Uh... <laughs> they, yeah, for GMA, they made me take it down. Yeah. <laughs> they would. They w- have you gone on what's that? The View. Uh, have you gone on that show yet? No, not yet. Oh, okay. Um, well, let's talk about your story. You, you you touched on it a little bit, but tell us kind of your journey of how you went from depressed. I mean, I, th- I think you were even suicidal at home to now celebrity, as I stated in the intro title. Um, you know, the transformation starts from within, and um, success is different for everybody. It's the definition that you give it. But I really find that for me, um, really going through those dark moments, being married three times, going through divorce, infidelity, uh, not fitting in, feeling fat, feeling rejected, um, all these emotions, dealing with failure and giving it a, a negative story and being a single mom for so long, um, it really... It really took me to some dark places because I had my own depression, my own emotions that I had to deal with. And on top of it, I also had three kids and I had to figure out how I was going to provide and work and find my way through all that, navigate through all of that. And I wasn't always the best parent and I wasn't always present because I was dealing with a lot of emotional self-esteem issues and always blaming myself for someone else's infidelity or, or abandonment. And I just had to come to a place where I was, you know, when, when you're about to lose your health and your life, that, you know, life is trying to get your attention. You know, I got knocked down to my knees with a brain cyst and not being able to walk and talk properly or function. And everything always was, you know, attributed to me being 420 pounds and that I was going to have a heart attack and a stroke. And then to find out that it wasn't that, that it's that I had a cyst that was growing, putting pressure on my brain. You know, when you get to that point where you're about to lose your life, it really makes you wake up and say, you know, 
I got to take personal responsibility and is this it? Is this really it? And, you know, what's going to happen to my kids? What's next? And that really is a wake up call. And that's where my wake up call, you know, came to me and, and, and really gave me, gave me this moment of saying there has to be more to life. And, and of course, being thankful that my dad was always there with, you could cry, keep walking. You got to fight for your life. Your voice matters. You got to find answers. You got, you can't give up. You can't give up for yourself and you can't give up for your kids. So coming to that place really was a wake up call that I had to do the inner transformation, the inner healing and find, go through self-discovery, find myself, find answers to my health, find answers for inner healing. And, and it really was uh, an aha moment, a moment that just brought me brought me so much value a moment that I didn't understand in that moment where it was taking me and it really it really brought a lot of breakthroughs in my life you mentioned that you had a brain cyst if I heard correctly is yeah. that what was causing the weight issues and the depression problems or was this a separate health problem no this was a separate health problem the weight gain came from um overeating um it came definitely from overeating not knowing how to deal with my emotional stress uh my depression I would run, run to food. I would run to food and I would isolate and, you know, I would constantly eat out of depression, out of unhappiness. That was my way of coping with it. And when it came to the brain cyst, I really feel that for me, the revelation now was that it manifested in my brain because I was, I was retaining all that, all that energy, that negative energy. I mean, when you talk about divorces, I went through mental, physical, and emotional abuse. And three divorces is not easy to process, but the same thing kept happening over and over again. And and I was being a victim of that. I was I was choosing to be a victim that instead of taking responsibility, saying, all right, if this has happened so many times, what am I contributing to that? What did I accept? What did I tolerate? And then therefore it manifested in, in my brain. And I really feel that it was all those emotions that I didn't know how to deal with. There was no escape for that. And it became trapped in my body and, and it manifested in sickness. You said you went through three divorces, I guess, three marriages. Did you have children with each partner? Yes, each partner. Yes, I did. So, okay. And um, we talk on our show a lot about we brought on doctors, we brought on spiritual experts, and they talk a lot about the importance of exercise, eating healthy. And I just want to let our listeners know, or or just remind them that we've we've talked about a lot of the stuff that that Rosie is going to talk about today, which is you know try to try to exercise even even if it's just fifteen minutes of running around the block, try to exercise every day, try to eat healthy. I talk about my vegetarian, somewhat vegan diet, um, and and just try to you know, be emotionally healthy and be around people who make you happy and not sad or depressed all the time. Um, even if things are going well, these are these are absolutely practices and rituals that you should be doing on a daily basis. You shouldn't wait for something bad to happen, like a divorce or a a, a brain cyst or um, some uh, the virus lockdowns. You shouldn't wait for something bad to happen for you to start implementing these habits. No, I, I and I think that, you know, we shouldn't. But unfortunately, you know, a lot of people do go through that because they don't know what to do next. They don't know how to get out of, out of a negative situation. They don't know what to deal, how to deal with their emotions um, of depression. They don't know how to deal with failure. Um, they've given it a negative story as a failure is such a bad thing. And I'm just here to invite you to really look at failure as as a learning lesson, ask, asking the right question is what is this teaching me? It's just a directing point in life telling you this isn't working. Try again, try something different, make create a different action. And you know, when it comes to vitality and longevity, um, when it comes to your health, it's not about the number on the scale that is associated with happiness. It's about what are you doing to take care of your body, your vessel that you're living in? You know, how are you taking care of that? How are you taking care of your mental health, your emotional health? How are you feeding your soul and your spirit? How are you really connecting? Um, and I think that's something that should be done by, day by day. But sometimes we get away from that because we stop the self-love. That's part of self-love. That's part of establishing rituals and habits that take care of you. And when you let that that you let those rituals and habits go, when you stop the self-love, then that's teaching everybody else that they could do the same thing, that they could treat you in the same way. So we really, we initiate and we set the precedence of how we, we let others treat us by the way we treat ourselves. So when you come from a place of love and self-respect and taking care of, then you're not going to let anybody else do anything other than that um, when it comes to a relationship with you. So I think that's so important when it comes to food. I think that it should be a, a mind frame that really 
really helped me because I could tell you I dieted. I went up and down. I have tried all the diets. And when it comes to diet, I think diet could be a very toxic word um, because it, it, it feels in a sense, especially being overweight, that every time I heard diet for me, it's like you can't have this. You just can't have it. And when you can't have it, you want it. And I feel when you go into transitioning that into, I'm just going to have a healthy lifestyle. I'm going to choose to feed my body nourishing foods. I'm going to choose to give it energy. I'm going to choose to walk because it makes me feel good. And it's a great uh, outlet to let go of thoughts. And, and you know, I'm going to listen to what my spirit is telling me. This allows me, gives me the peace. It's just a great energy output. And when you could frame it that way, just feel that you're set on a higher road of success where you're not going to fall back. Because when you diet, you end up falling back into old habits. Why? Because you get sick and tired of what, everything you can't have. And it's really a mentality of, all right, you get slapped in the hand. All right, I lost 10 pounds. All right, let's go back to old habits. Now I can have that piece of cake that I wanted. And look, you could have that piece of cake one once in a while. I'm not saying that you can't, but you just have to choose to love yourself and really understand, am I eating out of, out of anxiety? Am I eating out of anger? Am I eating out of depression? Or am I eating because I'm hungry? Or am I eating because I'm thirsty? Just asking quality questions and getting to know yourself. And don't be afraid of that. As somebody with four kids, sometimes you just want to go walking so you have some quiet. Um, yeah. How did you it's go a- from you know being the 420 pounds you talked about to a plus size model? Because plus size modeling, even still nowadays, isn't really a commonly seen thing. I know that there are plus size models, but in terms of like marketing and stuff, it's not exactly a big, a big industry. I don't think. I mean, I could be completely oh, wrong. It's a really- Boy, where have but, you been? No, have I'm, but I'm American talking about women? in terms of <laughs> in terms of like what you're seeing on TV. In terms of what you're seeing on TV. And so how did you transition into that profession? You know what? So so it's a great point. So when it comes to plus size and plus size industry is a booming industry. When we talk about fashion and clothing and everything that everybody's seeking, because the because the woman in the US is a size 12, 14, like that is your, right. your size now because everything has changed so much. Um, now when we come to entertainment, if you're talking about Hollywood, I think there's a big transformation. Why? Because the power of social media, the power of our voice, women are speaking up of demanding and wanting to see women that look like them, more curvy diversity of color, diversity of thought of background. I think people are seeking that and they're voicing it out now more than ever. So I think we're seeing a shift in that. Um, but when it comes to the places industry, it's a huge industry. It's a big market. And I think it still, it still needs more representation. It still needs a stronger voice in Hollywood, still needs a stronger voice in entertainment. I mean, I think eventually we'll get there because the reality is, is that we come in different shapes and sizes. We come in different voices, different backgrounds. And, um, it's about time that we celebrate all types of body instead of shaming them. And I think we have to create a shift also, um, to stop comparing, uh, comparing each body, you know, stop comparing our bodies to other bodies. We are uniquely made. Uh, we have our own purpose, our own story, our own voice that should be used for, for empowering someone should be used to uplift, not to bring someone down. So I just feel in the age of social media, it's a blo- both a blessing and a curse because it's so easy to uplift people, but it's also so easy to get in there and hide behind a screen and just bring people and tear them down. So when did you realize that you wanted to, and you could be a plus size model? Oh my God. So I went to Miss Plus America in Louisiana and I got part, I got to be part of a contest. Um, and it took, and this is such a funny story. So I got to be part of a beauty pageant that was for plus size women only. And I was like, oh my goodness, there's other plus size women that are beautiful. Cause living in Vegas, I, I really, I really was so lonely. I worked in radio. I didn't have a lot of friends. I had maybe one plus size friend and she was amazing. But other than that, I was just really lonely. So I really focused on on my passions and all of a sudden I get this invitation and it says Miss Plus America and I said well, what this what is this about and I see that it's a celebration of diverse bodies in different sizes and I see plus size women like modeling and and going into pageantry I had no clue that existed so I decided I'm going to join and become Miss Nevada first because you got to go through states to get to nationals and of course I won state because I was the only one that applied. So that for me was hilarious. I was the only one that applied. So they gave me the state title. I got to go to nationals. And when I showed up to nationals, I was blown away how many plus size, beautiful women there were. They were well-prepared. They were intelligent. They were educated. They were so feminine. They dressed so well. They handled themselves with such grace and confidence. It blew my mind. 
And the first time that I stepped on stage, I entered a competition for runway model, stepped on uh, stage one people's choice. And the moment that I stepped on the stage, I just felt, I just felt this is home. I felt empowered. I felt beautiful. I felt comfortable in my own skin. And I said, why am I not doing this? Why is there not more women at 380 pounds, 420 pounds doing this? I don't have anybody to look up to. And in my mind, my size wasn't the issue anymore. It's like, well, nobody's doing it. Let me be one of the first. And of course I did. I got invited to, uh, to participate in a competition, Face a Full Figured Fashion Week. I won the competition um, and they flew me down to New York. I got to walk the runway in New York. And when I did, I just, I got to talk to so many designers and ask the question, why is there only representation for size 14, 16 in the industry? And why isn't there big, bigger women modeling? There's bigger women. I, I want to like, I would love to step up and represent that. I want to be a voice and come to find out that in the industry, the sample size is a 14. So anyone bigger, does it fit in sample sizes to model? And that, just opened up my eyes into going into a different direction, finding my voice. I love the empowerment behind modeling. I loved um, being able to represent bigger women, but I had to learn to have tough skin because modeling is not an easy job. It's You see the end result is glamorous, it's beautiful, but you have to have thick skin because there's a lot of rejection in modeling and you have to be prepared for that. Yeah, and this is actually our second interview in, uh, interviewing a model. You're, you're the second person on our show and our listeners uh, after the first interview were like, oh, you know, that was actually very relevant to, to work working from home because people can take away lessons from what you are saying from your journey. So if you can share some more tips on boosting self-esteem, avoiding self-destructive behavior, because right now it's a very challenging time. The <laughs> unemployment yeah. situation worldwide, not just here in the United States, the unemployment situation is still terrible and a lot of people have lost their jobs are having financial issues marital issues body issues you name it they're having everyone's having issues yeah. um, and if you're not having issues good for you that's why contact us hello at workfromhomeshow.com and we'll get you on the show as a guest but what are your best tips on boosting self-esteem and avoiding self-destructive behavior yeah, self-destructive behavior i think and look this happens i think everybody regardless of your age your ethnic background female or male doesn't matter what you're going through i feel at some point in your life you will deal with self-esteem issues um going through a divorce failing at a business not understanding parenthood trying to figure out how to deal with your kids how to educate them how to be a good role model figuring out your own body issues what you love and dislike figuring out a healthy marriage if you don't have one how to attract one in if you do have one how to create a healthy one um, there's so much that this pandemic has forced us. It's forced us to look inward. It's forced us to isolate, disconnect even more so. And I think at the core, everybody's hungry for love and connection. We all want to be loved. We want to be accepted. And one of the things that I've learned throughout the process is walking in authenticity, owning exactly who I am and where I've been in my journey, not being ashamed of my past. I feel that when you fail or you don't succeed at something, it becomes very hard for a human being to say, I failed. It's almost painful to say that because you nobody wants to fail. Everybody wants to win. The problem with that is that it's the story that you're giving failure. And going through this pandemic, if you've had a career change, if you lost your job, this is a moment of self-discovery. This is a moment that you could give it a different story and say, this is, I'm going through hardships, but what is this teaching me about myself, about my relationships, about my family? What can I transform? And it's a moment of self-discovery of finding your passion, reconnecting with the people that you love. Um, it's about finding health and vitality for yourself. What are you going to do? Are you going to stay and become a victim of your circumstances? Or are you going to transform that sort of saying, you know what? This is what I have to celebrate my good times, but the dark times, I have to ask the quality questions. What can I learn and how can I transform? And for me, really, it starts with affirming talking life into your present. It all starts in your mind, comes through your mouth and becomes an action. And affirming who you are and understanding that we all go through ups and downs. And one of the things that I love to say, especially through tough times is I'm not what happened to me. I am what I choose to become. I choose to forgive and let go with love. And I choose to love myself through everything that I am. 
And when you take deep breaths in and deep breaths out, you just let it go. It allows you to close the door to the past, not be, be stuck in something that you can no longer change, but really focus on the, on the present to stand up, to create a new truth for yourself and get ready to lead a different life, make a different choice because the past is yet to come. And everybody, everybody is going through something. Um, the first step that you could do is affirm who you are. The second step, what can you do to ignite your passion? What turns you on? What really gets your attention? Educate yourself, listen to podcasts, read, dance, get excited, change your state. The next thing, learn to love yourself because you can't love other people until you learn to love yourself. The best relationship you will have in your life is the relationship that you will have with yourself and that will be with you for the rest of your life. Everything else is seasonal. People will walk into your life for a season and they will leave. There's things to learn. There's moments to grow, but you have to do the inner work of understanding where you are, what you want, and understand that you are worthy of creating a different life for yourself. You just have to do the work and figure out what is the next step in your life. Take charge, take responsibility. <laughs> so you're working um, as a life coach right now and you're on um, TV talking about that. You're on TV with Dr. Phil. Um, can you talk about, you know, you talk about providing a no shame environment. Now that's what you provide to other people, but how, how do you help people get out of the shame that they create for themselves? Mm, it's about being honest. I think you have, you have to be honest. If you want to get out of the shame, you got to be honest. You got to speak up. You got to vocalize that, that which you're ashamed of, um, to stand up. I could tell you one of the reactions I had on stage when I was on face the truth. Um, I, I, I was on stage and someone was dealing with, um, divorce and they were really ashamed to go through that. And they were going through a painful divorce. Not only was it divorce, it, it had infidelity mixed in the picture and kids. And, you know, there's this moment of vulnerability that this person is going through that. And they feel for one divorce, they feel like they failed. Nobody's ever going to love them. No, no, you know, nobody's ever going to respect them. Nobody's going to ever love their kid. And I just had this moment that I just had to step into my truth and say, hey, if you think no one's going to love you, let me tell you something. I've been married and divorced three times. And I can tell you the reaction from the audience. They laughed at me. They laughed when they said they're like, yeah, you think you've been married one too many times. Now, I could be a victim of that and be ashamed and never speak about it. Or I could be empowered and say, you know what? That's only happened to you once, but let me give you perspective. It's happened to me three times, and you know what? There's a lesson I learned. And because of that, that doesn't determine my future. It doesn't determine my present. It doesn't It doesn't determine my, my value as a woman. It doesn't take respect away from me. It's just an experience that I had. I've learned from that, but you know what? It's prepared me to understand my value as a woman. It's taught me to self-respect. It's taught me to evaluate, to self-discover. And you know what I'm telling you right now? My best times are coming. I'm going to wait for the right person. I'm going to get to know myself. I'm going to date myself. I'm going to buy myself those flowers. I'm worthy of that. And you know what? At the right timing, when I go through the healing and I get to know who I am, I will attract the love of my life. I'm not going to be looking for it. I will attract the right partner who's going to love me and my kids. And I could tell you when you transform mm -hmm. those moments of shame, when people are shaming you and you just step into your power of not making that, that's not my truth. And you declare your truth. You are giving a shift to that story and you are no longer permitting that shame to come into your life. You are pushing it off and you're giving it an empowering story that's going to propel you into success. That's going to propel you into attracting exactly who you are and what, what you want. Rosie, how many kids do you have? I have four. I am happily married. I have a five month old. I'm 40 years old. I'm oh, so wow. excited. I'm so excited to be in a healthy marriage. I've been married two years now and I'm just excited to be in a healthy marriage and to have had so much time to discover myself and come to a place where I have boundaries, where I'm vulnerable, where I'm excited, I'm alive, I'm living with purpose, doing the things that I absolutely love and have a partner that supports me. And he has his own life that he's living and, and that we have a, a child together and we have a big blended family of seven kids together. <laughs> Man, five months old, I'm better you than me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what so much patience you know at 40 i've learned so much patience i've learned so much love and um everything everything happens for a reason i can tell you that everything happens for a reason god's timing is the right timing so how did you with uh four kids uh, with three different men i believe how did you do that with as you know losing weight TV star, plus size model. How did you juggle all that? I'm, I'm guessing 
many of their fathers lived in different parts of the country. Oh well, the fathers are not involved. So oh, they're like, not. Okay. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, yeah, they're not. Yeah, they're they're yeah, okay. they're not. They're not involved. <laughs> yeah, fathers are not involved. And um, so even more, how did you do it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, even more so. You play mom and dad. You juggle, and and in the juggling and finding yourself, that's where the stress comes in as a single parent. So pa- single parents that are out there listening, I I understand what you're going through. The stresses. I've learned. That if the house is not 100% clean, it's okay. As long as my kids are fed, they're happy, they're, 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 they're going in a direction that they're accomplishing things that make them happy. I understand their passions. Um, I'm motivating them to find themselves. Um, I th- that's what's important. You know, if the house isn't properly t- taken care of where everything's completely in order, you know, there's, there's just, you have to set your priorities. And as a single parent, it gets exhausting to clean, to cook, take care of children, be the provider, be mom and dad. I know what that is. I did it for so long. And I'm just, I'm so, 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 so thankful that I had support um, with my parents and being able to accomplish and, and and accomplish my dreams and go after them. I think that was also key to my success as a single parent, finding my happiness and my kids allowing, you know, allowing my kids to see that I fell, but I got back up and I found myself. And they saw me cry and they saw me depressed, but they also saw me wet my tears and they saw me get up and go after my dreams. Now, going back to your weight, I believe you lost 240 pounds or some, somewhere around there. How did you do that? Oh, my goodness. You get sick and tired of not fitting in a car and being body shamed. And you get sick and tired of not being able to do other things that other people do. Um, I wasn't able to ride a bike, fit in a car. Seat extenders all the time, um, worrying about breaking chairs. Uh, when you get that heavy, you really have to rethink that. And it just got to a point where I was body shamed and I had to really evaluate my life. I mean, it come to a place where so many things were happening. And when you don't fit in a seat and you're called out on that publicly, you got to think. I had a couple out. I had several hours going to New York that I had to think about because I was shamed at an airport um, from Vegas to New York. And they told me publicly that I had to buy a second seat. And when I'm telling you they were not nice about it, they were not nice about it. I mean, I had people laughing at me. I literally started crying when that happened. And to make it worse, they sent me front row. Everybody's boarding. And they put this little nice sign on the second seat, seat taken. And then they had me a seat seatbelt extender in front of everybody and to make things worse. And I really sat there lonely and hurt. I just felt so ashamed. And I really came to a place... What am I sacrificing? I had to ask, you know, ask myself, what am I sacrificing? Is this a life that's that I really want to live? And what am I teaching my kids? And it wasn't about selling out to Hollywood. It wasn't about selling out to the plus size industry and becoming a model. I was modeling at 420 pounds. I was already doing that. It really came down to finding health and vitality and learning in the process that that number on the scale plays a mental number on you and your and your mental health, that your happiness cannot be cannot be weighed on how much you weigh because that number changes in the morning, midday and afternoon. Like that number goes all over the place. And if you're really going to base your your happiness on completely losing weight, it's not going to work because what happens when you gain it back? What happens when you go up and down? That's just life. It really is about just understanding what's important to you. And for me, it was about having longevity. It was about being able to get on a bike, chase my kids, going to Disneyland, going on a roller coaster ride, being able to fit in a car, not breaking a chair. Um, it wasn't about being a certain size because I could tell you right now, I am a curvy woman with big hips and I am a proud size 14. And you know what? I, I love my body. I'm always going to be curvy. And you know, if you're a size zero, congrats to you. I'm never going to be a size zero. And if you're a size 24 and you're happy, congrats to you. As long as you're happy in your own skin, be thankful. Love your vessel. This is what God gave you to live your purpose. Awesome. Wow. That was Great answer, great episode. Rosie Mercado, internationally renowned plus size model, celebrity makeup artist, fashion designer, TV personality, star of the reality TV show Curvy Girls on Nouveau TV, National Geographic's Taboo. She is also a correspondent and life coach on The Doctors and Dr. Phil and co host of Face the Truth on Fox. She is a best selling author of the podcast and the new book. Check it out on Amazon The Girl with the Self Esteem Issues, a memoir. We hope all of you enjoyed the episode today. Many of us have self-esteem issues right now, whether it's our work situation, our family situations, our personal physical situations. So we hope you found this episode very, very worthwhile, productive, and informative. 
rosiemercado.com. That's her website, rosiemercado.com. Rosie, do you have any final thoughts or anything else you want to plug? Oh my goodness, yes. Um, you could get my book, The Girl with Self Esteem Issues. It's going to be available in English and Spanish, um, wherever you purchase books. And of course, you could take a listen to my podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, The Girl with Self Esteem Issues, also in English and Spanish. And, you know, I just appreciate the love and support, guys. I, I think now more than ever, it's really important through the pandemic that we understand how much people are dealing with self esteem issues, how much it could impact you. And, you know, my final thought, I said in the book, it's your responsibility to fulfill your dream. Nothing can stop you from your destiny. And something that I live through is I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Having faith along the way helps so much more. Um, you're worthy of it all. Love yourself and understand that there's great power when you make a big decision. Miraculous power, um, miraculous faith brings miraculous uh, action. You could accomplish anything that you want to do. Go and create your life. Live it. You're worth it. Excellent. Rosie Mercado, thanks so much for joining us on the Work From Home Show. And to all our listeners, visit our website, workfromhomeshow.com. That's www.workfromhomeshow.com. Get on our mailing list. You, we got all sorts of freebies we're giving away to our email subscribers. Leave us a review on iTunes or TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, whatever their, whatever podcast platform you use. And if you have any questions, if you liked this episode with Rosie and want to hear more from any guest suggestions, Hello at workfromhomeshow.com. Email us, hello at workfromhomeshow.com. And until next time, keep on working from home.